Naruto is, as we all know, the main character of the manga and anime series Naruto. He's determined and somewhat goofy. He aspires to be the Hokage of the Hidden Leaf and protect everyone he loves. Starting out as a loser with nothing to his name, he becomes a child of prophecy with everything to his name. This of course is just the surface of his character, versus Luffy. Luffy is primarily characterized by his incredible stupidity and his incredible determination. While being very simple minded, Luffy will rarely give up on a goal he has set. Luffy is the pirate captain of the Straw Hat Pirates. Ever since he was a child, he dreamed of becoming a pirate and eventually the Pirate King, who to him is the freest man on the sea. The mangaka for Naruto and One Piece are well-known friends. Oda and Kishimoto's hit manga were both serialized within the same magazine, and the two have revealed in interviews that they've been in contact. In fact, way back in 2013, Oda was hospitalized, and while he was there, Kishimoto visited him and held him out, even witnessing the creation of the Dressrosa arc. Why am I bringing this up? Well, because no matter the outcome, whether Luffy wins or Naruto wins this matchup, both of these characters are legendary in their own ways. And let's be real, both Naruto and Luffy would just be like, feast on meat and ramen. But how would they do in a brawl? Before I get into the scale itself, keep in mind that the Earth in One Piece is far larger than our own Earth. This is kind of a comparison for reference. Now, I'm not going to try to give you an exact measurement for the One Piece Earth, but it is definitely several times larger than our Earth. For example, it is explicitly stated that the Sandora River that crosses Arabasta is 50 kilometers wide, which is calculated to be larger than the size of India, with a square mileage of 1.269 million. And according to Google, the Earth has a squared mileage of 197 million, which would mean that our Earth would only be able to fit about 150 of these. And this island isn't the largest in one piece. It's a very comparable sized island with multiple islands being relative in size or bigger. Now, it's also stated that the total amount of islands within the One Piece world is anywhere from 10 to 20 million, which is absurd. Obviously, each island isn't the same size as Arabasta, but you can somewhat get an idea of how big the world is. It's also shown that this world has multiple moons orbiting it. You get the picture. Larger planet, more than likely several times larger, which is why I think this image is accurate with its size scaling. But what relevance does this have? Well, an island level feat in One Piece first would be more like continental, and something like country level when you're lowballing it. Let's start off with Ryu Hockey. Ryu Hockey allows for a more refined control of one's airman hockey. Users can manipulate the literal hockey itself, instead of using it for just hardening. As an example, the hockey can be projected outside the user's body and can be used in various ways. One of which can be creating an invisible barrier between the user and the opponent. This is basically what the three admirals did to project their hockey to create a force field shielding them from a shockwave. Luffy also attempts this against Big Mom in the very similar way that the admirals did, and could also fly because he can control the flow of Ryo and can control himself using the aura. Anyone who can use Ryo can also project hockey to make energy blasts that kind of look like shockwaves while stealing damage and knocking back the opponent. Luffy also liquefied someone's internal organs, which in itself would make this durability negation, though I don't think this would work on someone who's significantly stronger, like say Saitama for example. It also had the power to destroy an indestructible sea stone collar. The reason I don't scale Luffy using the has the power to destroy the world statement is because this is a very clear example of hyperbole but could mean he'll sink all land masses with earthquakes, so technically destroy the world, which is supported because no one is really terrified of Whitebeard destroying stuff himself, but of his quake fruit, hence why Blackbeard wanted it. Which is why I think Planetary might just be a highball for Luffy, but Island Level in my opinion is a lowball, and would be taking everything at face value. Most consistently, Luffy should be at bare minimum multi-continental, and if you're taking Whitebeard's statement at face value, then he'd be capable of destroying the planet, that far exceeds the mass of our own Earth. And I already went over the size of the planet, but it's still gonna be very contentious. There are arguments that can actually get the mass to be the size of Jupiter, which holds a mass of over 1,300 times that of Earth, or even as large as the Sun, as crazy as that might sound. Now, these aren't baseless implications, as I went over earlier, but I think that if you're highballing the size of the planet, Jupiter size should be the stretch of the argument itself. And if we grant a Whitebeard the feat of being able to destroy the entire planet and highball the mass of the One Piece Earth to be the size of the sun, Whitebeard would be star level in terms of destructive capabilities, and current Luffy does indeed scale to this pretty clearly. Over the course of the voyage in the Grand Line, he developed techniques he calls Gears to utilize his Devil Fruit to combat stronger opponents, 
such as speeding up his own blood flow to increase his speed or enlarge his bones, as well as his muscles for more powerful strikes. In the fight against Kaido, Luffy tapped into what is his strongest form of all time, and supposedly him at his current peak. Gear 5 Luffy is afforded far greater strength, speed, and durability than those with unawakened Zoan powers. He gains enough strength and speed to match and eventually overpower Luffy's own awakened Zoan form without getting serious against him. Now, the multiplier for Gear 5 is unknown, though as I mentioned, it clearly made him a lot stronger. Another thing that is pretty blatant is Luffy's Toon Force. Luffy very clearly has Toon Force, it's not even an arguable thing. He's able to make Kaido's eyes become all cartoony, straight out of a comic strip. At this point, it's genuinely arguable for Luffy to have extremely low levels of reality warping, though as I said, extremely low levels of it, meaning he can't just blink away my boy Naruto. Bro is able to pick up a ceiling and reflect a beam with it, which doesn't even make sense. However, this is the same case as Saitama and his gag-like abilities. This very clearly doesn't make Luffy above the tiering system or something like that. He has comedic and cartoonish moments, something that a lot of characters in a lot of different franchises have. Not everything Luffy does is like this, my point being that Luffy cannot just go out and one-shot fiction. And this is especially the case for crossverse battles, where if the character isn't entirely built on their gag or toonish moments, then it isn't going to help them win a fight against someone like Spongebob or Popeye. My main point being that Toon Force doesn't grant Luffy a instant win or anything like that. Luffy is very clearly above lightspeed, just using statements. Ben can multiply his speed with the gears. There really isn't too much that can be said, other than he's most likely FTL+, and at the bare minimum, faster than light. And using calcs, you can get Luffy to moon level, which is pretty consistent in my opinion. If you want to hear more about moon level Luffy, then go watch Tyler's video on it. He has a pretty good take on Gear 5 Luffy's strength, so that'll be linked in the description, but yeah. Now, one thing I want to get out of the way is Naruto is planetary. Simple as that. Naruto is at the very, very, very bare minimum planetary. It's not a Luffy situation where you have to take certain things at face value in order to get Luffy that high. Naruto is just him. For example, Teneri was explicitly stated by himself to have the power to destroy the Earth, then got one shot by Naruto who wasn't even in his strongest form, nor his prime. Naruto and Sasuke were able to fight Momoshiki, Momoshiki being a being who exceeds the power of Kaguya, the mother of Chakra. In fact, apparently Momoshiki is strong enough to make Kaguya want an army to protect herself against him. Now, what I'm going to say is 100% going to be the most contentious part of the entire video, and if you disagree with this portion of it, I will provide alternatives. Kaguya's dimensions are at the bare minimum planet in size. Bare minimum. These are explicitly stated to be a time space. If you know what a time space is, it is the physical universe in which we and everything resides in. And Naruto was able to completely overpower Kaguya multiple times, and just eventually outscaling her in Boruto. There are also statements of Momoshiki planning to indiscriminately eating up all the star's chakra, and even absorb a star, straight up saying that he was going to destroy the entire solar system, and even draining the chakra from beyond the parallel universe he'd constructed. There are also many promotional guys that say a battle in a parallel universe, saying parallel universe many more times, you get the idea. Then Boruto kills Momoshiki with a Rasengan infused with mostly Naruto's chakra. Another thing I'd like to mention is that according to this guide, this guy can actually just split and travel through dimensions, similar to Kamoi, and Sasuke was capable of fighting on par with him, which Naruto would scale relative or above him, which would pretty easily get him anywhere from solar system to universal. Varian mode is a process similar to nuclear fission, Naruto and Kurama's chakra are consumed as raw materials to produce a new type of energy. Baryon mode is so powerful that previous to this Baryon mode amp, Ishiki was able to completely embarrass Naruto and Sasuke. Then Naruto was out here making this guy look weak. This would immediately scale his AP to whatever you believe Ishiki is. It means Naruto would just surpass Kaguya and a Momoshiki. It's also pretty consistent because he was able to completely block Toneri's moon level attack with ease. And as I stated earlier, Toneri states pretty blatantly that he's going to destroy the Earth. Now, the reason why I believe that Kaguya is planetary and Naruto would scale to her, for starters, it is explicitly stated that 
Augia created these six dimensions in this data book. And the fact is, even if you think that this was done via hacks, Kaguya would still need enough chakra to create these solar system sized dimensions. Meaning that she would need a solar system amount of chakra, and chakra can be used with any of your attacks, and it can actually be used to amplify your actual abilities. So at the bare minimum, Kaguya would have solar system level attacks, and Naruto would scale to this. And whether you choose to believe that Kaguya's dimensions are universal in size doesn't really matter, it, it kind of just adds on to my point that Naruto beats Luffy, but yeah. Hey guys, same man speaks here. Before I get into my take, I'd like to say thank you to Toaster for having me on the video. If you're watching this and you're not already subscribed to him, go ahead and do that. Anyways, I'm strongly of the opinion that Naruto wins this fight. Why you may ask? Because Naruto is universal. Naruto was able to match Kaguya in combat, who is credited to have created six dimensions. Many like to lowball these dimensions to planetary, but allow me to present this scan. Here, the dimensions are stated to be parallel universes, which naturally would get them to universal scaling. Many come up with the argument that this is merely a hex, and technically they're right, but in this scan, it's explicitly stated that Kaguya must use an immense amount of chakra to activate said hex, meaning Kaguya possesses a universal amount of chakra, and as we know, chakra can be amplified for combat, meaning Naruto overcame universal strength and is therefore universal as well. Speed is very simple, the Raikage is stated to be the speed of light, and Naruto is faster than him, bringing him to FTL speeds. Now for the pirate one. By the way, shout out to John Pizza Pasta for basically doing this exact same scale with me on my channel. Before I dive into that, the world of One Piece is far bigger than Earth, as seen here, so any island level feats would be closer to Continental. In this scan, Luffy goes to punch Kaido, and since he can stretch and stuff, his fist is calculated to be 16 miles in length. He even manages to land this hit in less than a second. With that speed and size, his hit is equivalent to 4.49 petatons of TNT. The strongest nuke ever dropped was 50 megatons, and one petaton contains 1 million megatons. This means Luffy's punch alone would be equal to the strongest nuke in history if they dropped 89,000 of them at once. Multi-Continental Luffy. For speed, he dodges lasers, which would be dodging light, meaning he is FTL as well. To conclude this little segment, Naruto dog walks without a sliver of difficulty. Before I pass it on to the next creator, I'm gonna plug myself, because why not? My name is Sayaman Speaks. I make videos on here similar to toasters, so subscribe if you're interested in that. My link should be in the description. And follow my TikTok, at Sayaman Speaks as well. I occasionally post edits on there, but it's less frequent than the YouTube. Sayaman out. Thank you again, Toaster, for asking for my opinion. Hey, I'm Mr. Crafty from Mr. Crafty Scales. I'd like you to check out my channel, and I just want to say thank you again for asking my own opinion. My own personal opinion, I really don't think it's close between the fight. Naruto should take every category. For AEP, it's just, I don't think it's, I think it's irrefutable, because, like, it's even hard to argue one piece for, like, Luffy being planetary, when you have some just blatant planetary calcs or statements or feet for Naruto, plus way higher. In speed, I know you can make arguments for both sides that win was faster at light speed first, but I'm pretty sure if you do give Luffy the edge, it's not even that big of an edge, although my own personal opinion I do say so Naruto's faster and hacks wise I know you can say that maybe gear 5th gives him some tunish abilities or some type of subjective reality manipulation but even that is like very like again subjective and it's not some high Bugs Bunny type tier compared to Naruto who's just built as an overwhelming character he's got hundreds of jutsus he can pull out of his ass that pretty much just like would help him win most fights I really don't think it's fair, at least from what we've seen from Luffy, I don't think he's ever going to be able to truly catch up to Naruto, but no, that's just my opinions. If you want to talk to me more about it, you can go onto my Discord. What's up, it's Jordan. My personal take on Naruto vs Luffy in terms of defeats that Naruto more likely take this fight. And I know this is controversial, but with the fierce Naruto has shown, especially in terms of his speed, where he arguably reaches MFT level with his speed at the age of 16, allowing his ability to come back from life-ending blows, he goes up to help with a nine tails, making him nearly impossible to take down. And to address arguments that One Piece sailors make in terms of Luffy winning, it's Gear 5. While I know Gear 5 Luffy is stated to only be limited by his imagination, this is more likely a hyperbolic statement. This is a hyperbolic statement due to the context of what Luffy does after receiving this ability. If he truly can make anything reality just with his mind or just put anything in motion in terms of him thinking, would he just instantly find the One Piece or instantly accomplish any goal that he had in mind at the moment he received such a power? The fact that he doesn't made this statement seem more hyperbolic and more than likely a hype statement, but what puts the nail in a coffin for Naruto winning this fight is his form called Baryon. 
where upon him tagging his opponents using nuclear fusion, he rips the life force from his opponents. And given the fact that he is more than likely faster than Luffy, he has probably gotten away faster since his FTL feats from the age of 16, I'll say Naruto will most likely be able to speed blitz Luffy and punch the life force out of him, killing him before Yuki even has a chance to react.